begins working for the government in the national service. He works into the military. He joins military intelligence, and at that point, his career enters an obscure phase. So there's little, little known about his activities uh, with MI6, except to say that he was stationed in Egypt and he spoke Russian fluently. He boasted about his involvement with mafia figures, but no one took him seriously. After his death, there were documents and news articles uh, that he had in his possession that indicated that possibly he was telling the truth. And there are indications over the years that, that yes, he did have mob ties. Jeffrey went out of his way to make life difficult for Hendricks. He would book him in Toronto one night, and then he'd have him booked in Miami. And then the next night, he'd do it one night in California. And he kept him exhausted. He kept him dependent. And uh, he kept him under control. Jeffrey was a very devious human being. He set up a, a dummy corporation he called Yometa, and much of the stolen money went into this corporation, and then it was divided between two banks, the Chemical Bank of Nassau and uh, the Nova Scotia Bank. Jeffrey was stealing money from him, sabotaging his career, planning people around him to spy on him and to subvert his own activities, his own life. And Hendricks, yeah, he had a growing awareness that this was happening to him, and he knew who to blame. And then when he discovered that the money was missing, he filed a suit against Michael Jeffrey. And Hendricks's death occurs just before uh, Michael Jeffrey's appearance in the courtroom to answer to Jimi Hendrix on the lawsuit. Not only was Michael Jeffrey stealing Jimi Hendrix's money, his contract as manager was ending. And he also felt that Hendrix's new music wouldn't sell. And yeah, he had a $2 million dollar insurance policy on Hendrix's there life. There you go, that's why. Clearly, it suited the U.S. government, the Mafia, and in particular, Michael Jeffrey, for Jimmy to be neutralized. But just how did Jimi Hendrix die? All right, now it's been said for, the, like, for 30 years that Jimi Hendrix choked on his own vomit. It was said that he died of a heroin over, overdose. Of course, none of that's true. He didn't choke to death on his own vomit. Something had to make him sick. So now, it's known that he took nine Vesperex tablets. These are sleeping pills uh, the night that he died. Now, it's been said that he died from an overdose of barbiturates. The problem is Jimi Hendrix was a chronic insomnia. He was used to barbiturates, and the Vesperex that he, he took really had very little effect on him. He took two tablets. He didn't feel a thing, couldn't go to sleep. He had taken an amphetamine capsule at a party the night before. So the nine Vesperex tablets he, he took really had no connection to his ultimate end. But when he was wheeled into the emergency room, his throat was cleared, and the visit, physician wrote that great masses of red wine came gushing out of his stomach and his lungs. But, his wine so as I reenact the death of Jimi Hendrix, he must have been held down, a gallon of wine poured down his throat until he drowned. There were only 20 milligrams of alcohol in his blood when he was brought to the emergency room, which means there wasn't even enough time for that alcohol to enter his system. So the cause of death was drowning, and it looks to me like it was a forced drowning. That's one part of the great chunks of animals, but I can't let the joke come out. Jimmy Hendrix had a packet of 42 Vesperex ta tablets in his pocket. Now, e Eric Burden uh, of the Animals has claimed that Jimmy Hendrix committed suicide. If that was the intent, it's very likely that he would have taken all the barbiturates in his possession. So it's clear that suicide was not the option. If suicide had been the intent, uh, and if Clearly he had died murder. accidentally, it's doubtful that he would have been fully dressed. He was found fully clothed. When the ambulance drivers arrived, they said that no one else was there. Monica Danneman claimed to be there, and of, co of course her testimony has holes in it the size of the Brooklyn Bridge. She said now she we accompanied know, him in the ambulance, clothes, too. Right? We know that it wasn't an accident. We know that uh, he didn't just die in his sleep. He was, he was in his London hotel room, and he must have been restrained. It's very doubtful that he sat down to drink the red wine and filled up his stomach and his lungs. I've never heard of such a thing. The only other possibility is that his head was held in a sink full of wine until he drowned, 
or he was held down and it was poured down his throat. And I think this is the most likely scenario because it's doubtful that his, his stomach would be so full of wine. I think he was held down, it was forced down his throat, filled his lungs, and uh, he was dead uh, within minutes. Okay. After Hendricks died, uh, Michael Jeffrey acted like a guilty man. He, uh, he came to the funeral, but he sat in his car outside. He actually confessed to a, a jazz producer by the name of Alan Douglas, who was a good friend of Jimi Hendrix, that he had something to do with the murder. He wasn't entirely clear about it, but it was clear to Alan Douglas that Michael Jeffrey was making a confession. Even after Hendrix's death, the classic patterns of an Operation Chaos killing were followed. Another symptom in this case is the, uh, uh, the investigation that follows uh, the rather questionable circumstances of his death, which never takes the time, very rushed, doesn't take the time to reconcile the different witness testimony surrounding uh, his death. The autopsy uh, is, is very, very questionable uh, because it basically says that uh, he died uh, in his own vomit, okay? Uh, and a later study revealed that it was actually drowning, you know, with large amounts of red wine. Okay, and then uh, Monica Veneman said it was white you wine. You have this uh, policy of defamation or degradation, whatever term you want to apply to it, uh, in which uh, the uh, the target then is smeared posthumously. This degradation of Jimi Hendrix began immediately after his death. Uh, newspapers around the world reported that he died of a heroin overdose, and of course it's well known that Jimi Hendrix didn't take heroin. He didn't indulge in it. He didn't care for it. He was a psychedelics man, right? So he didn't die of heroin. There was no it. heroin in his blood, right? Yet the press made this claim. I would be willing to guess that 90% of the press. people familiar with Hendrix think he OD'd on heroin when Hendrix actually never took heroin, right? And then you get uh, these very mysterious fatalities that take place around the people who are close to him. James Joplin. Uh, Devin Wilson, one of his girlfriends, dies in 1971 uh, out the window of an eighth-story hotel. All right, then Jeffrey himself perishes in uh, another suspicious airplane crash in 1973. And then the last girlfriend, Monica Danneman, who an alleged suicide, carbon monoxide poisoning in 1995, just before she's supposed to go on the air and discuss and tell the truth about the very strange circumstances surrounding Jimmy's death.